Giannis on Giannis Antetokounmpo in the Milwaukee Bucks, which is insane. Now, uh, what's kind of, well, I don't want to say what's kind of funny, but like, man, people were counting the heat out so much in this series. It was actually insane how much of an underdog this team was. Obviously, them losing to the um, Atlanta Hawks in the playing tournament to even get into the NBA playoffs was uh, baffling. A lot of even my Heat fans then, at least I saw in their community and stuff like that, were already giving up on the team then because we all thought Miami and the Celtics was going to be the best matchup for Miami, but no, 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 Jimmy Butler had a different idea. He was going to lock in no matter uh, who, uh, who was against it. Like, 
this that I don't know if anyone saw coming. Well, probably some people, but not to the uh, heights that it went to with basically Dylan Brooks, Dylan Brooks calling LeBron um, just another NBA player, kind of uh, disregarding LeBron James and just calling him just another NBA guy and he doesn't respect LeBron or whatever. It was, it's, it's crazy. And uh, I think one of my favorite things, um, well, I don't want to say, like I'm not like, you know, praying on the downfall of Memphis. If Memphis comes back and wins this series, that's cool. That's actually a great feat for them. But I think it's funny that LeBron doesn't come out the next game and absolutely rattle Dylan Brooks, get up in his grill, feed and do this thing. Maybe LeBron scores 50 points in the next playoff uh, appearance, and maybe he's, like, taunting Dylan Brooks. He just does his LeBron thing. He has, like, 20 points and, like, 13, 15 rebounds or something like that. He plays a normal LeBron James game, and they win the game, and then they win the next game. He basically shuts up Dylan Brooks by just winning. And isn't that just golf clap? golf clap, golf clap for LeBron, that is just like, Mwah. that is how you uh, make, someone, make someone shut up, is if you just win, and that's what the game is, is if you win, even if Dylan Brooks, his next game, drops 40 points, it doesn't matter if Memphis loses, and loses the series, um, and uh, Dylan Brooks is also just kind of doing it to himself, because he's playing absolutely horrible, so hopefully, he gets back in a groove, I guess. I don't know. Um, that Memphis Grizzlies team is so deep with talent. And that Desmond Bain has been looking really good in the playoff series as well. So shout out to Desmond Bain, kind of keeping them afloat. But, man, I said it too. And a lot of people have said it. Obviously, I'm not taking any credit for it. But, you know, it, that's the difference between a championship pedigree and playoff veteran leadership versus just talent. There's a big difference. Um... And yeah, it might be Lakers in five. It might be, uh, but I'm going to say Lakers also kind of like with the Heat Bucks series. I think that the Grizzlies will win game five. I think it goes back to LA in six. And the Lakers got to, they got to close it in, in LA because if that game, if that series goes back to Memphis for game seven, man, I don't know about those tired old legs. I'll knock on wood for them. If they can make it all the way to game seven, I think they have to close it at least in game six, give it a shot in game five. If y'all are getting blown out, pull the plug, get ready for game six, because that'll be a very fun game. But I, I, I still have Lakers winning that. I can knock on wood. But uh, it's another series that can be very much won. Um, we also have the other series of the Suns and Clippers ending, which, man, again, that one's already ended, so I can't really talk about it because I get the upcoming video. But holy cow, um, all the games of that series, or I think single digits, or a vast majority of them were, again, we're, we're going to skip over this, but like, man, Kawhi and Paul George, I, I, dude, I have no idea what that team does, I really don't know, because you can't blow the team up, because Steve Ballmer just paid, like, X amount of billions of dollars to build a new stadium, and their headliners were going to be Kawhi and Paul George, the stars of the new era of Clipper basketball. And it's not really going that way. And, uh, you know, we're really going to have to see where this team goes because this team could definitely easily blow it up in, like, the next year or two. And that's going to look really bad for this new era of Clipper basketball in a new arena, not sharing it with the LA Lakers finally. Anyways, the Suns move on. Kind of saw it coming, but man, I think even if one of Paul George, if not Kawhi Leonard, were healthy, I think the Clippers would have at least taken this to, taken this to like a six, seven game series, even with one of them, with both. I think the Clippers would win like five or six, just in my opinion. Just in my opinion. We also had the Denver Nuggets and Minnesota Timberwolves series ending. Um, no duh, <laughs> no, no duh. Um, going to be really interesting to see what happens with that Minnesota Timberwolves team if they sort of blow up their team. Carly Downs try to get some assets and young players more on the timeline of Anthony Edwards. We'll have to see, but that's also a big possibility. Um, we had Trey Young hitting a great
crazy, crazy, crazy game winner on uh, the Celtics in game five. It was game five. Going back to Atlanta for game six. I mean, if you are uh, an Atlanta Hawks fan, boy, you guys better be loud because y'all are going to need it because, you know, the thing about the Hawks is that they are a very dangerous team. Um, we've seen it before, obviously, in the playoffs where they had that crazy Eastern Conference Finals run. They're a dangerous team, and when you give them confidence, they're going to take it. And right now, I think they're kind of getting their swagger, swagger, the swagger back a little bit. And you don't want that with the Hawks when they play confidently, freely. Um, they're a, a tough team, and uh, going back to ATL, they might have it, so... I think it does end, though, in Atlanta in Game 6. I think the Celtics uh, pack it in for them, but that should be a fun, fun one for sure. Um, that that game winner from Trey Young was pretty nice, and yet Trey Young has also just been very wishy-washy. This is not only just something, this entire playoff run, but also just this season as a whole. I feel like he's been very much a, an, an off-thought topic, you know, as like a top point guard, and at least what it used to be in the NBA, sort of being the next great young point guard now, just kind of being an afterthought, at least for me, as someone who lives on the literal opposite side of the country. I don't really get to hear a lot about uh, Trey Young a lot anymore. Uh, of course, we have like the, the Sixers and the Nets, that's kind of blah, whatever. Um, I guess we, we could talk, uh, you know, trade talks, obviously I would have my, my Blazer gear on, talk about Mikhail Bridges and Dame and the Nets and the Blazers, but um, so they've already asked my opinion on them, and I don't really have an opinion. You guys know my opinion about, you know, the entirety of the situation of Portland. Whatever Dame wants, I do not care. Whatever happens, I do not care. I do not let basketball and what happens in, in a sport uh, sort of scene uh, mess with my thought process and my feelings and my emotions. Whatever happens, happens, but... Um, if Dame goes to the net school, if Mikhail goes to the Blazers school, um, if nothing happens, that's cool. Um, I, I don't really have a, a huge opinion on it, but that series, I have an opinion on it. It was boring. It was tiresome. I, I, I really wish the Nets, well, no offense to any Nets fans, I wish the Nets wouldn't make the playoffs because I feel like a team outside of the playoffs made it, would have made it a little bit more interesting, just in my opinion. The, you know, shout out to Katie and, you know, Kyrie Irving for helping that team make the playoffs, I guess. Um, uh, the Knicks in the Cavs series, oh my god. Man, the Cavaliers and, and the Knicks, a lot of people thought that was going to be the best series maybe of the entire first round. A lot of people were picking that to go seven, so did I. I thought that was going to be like a seven, six game series. Um, and, yeah, it's just the fact of, um, the, the, the Cleveland Cavaliers bench is just so bad. It's so hard for the starters to really get in a good groove, and when they do get in a good groove, they are just so tired before they can really even get anything going, and, you know, uh, the Knicks have always had, like, a pretty good defensive team, but even now it's just easier for the Knicks because, again, you're just playing against dead, tired, um, overplayed starters for the Cavaliers that just have to put out so much effort because their bench is, you know, Ricky Rubio and Jetty Osmond, like, it's just not working for them, and, uh, 
so sorry if you're not the biggest fan of it, but uh, trying to mix in different triggers throughout my videos, at least especially these longer ones for sure. Um, what else do we have to talk about? Um, did we talk about two, three, six? What's it? Oh yeah, the, the Kings and Warriors probably still the best series in the NBA um, today as you guys are watching this video. will be game five of that series and uh, I'm going to be watching the entirety of it. Finally, I get to watch some basketball. Uh, I haven't really been watching a whole lot of it because I've just been so busy, obviously, with um, the huge video that was posted on Sunday, the ASMR at the soccer slash football game, which, by the way, we are going to be talking football. Just give me a second. And, um, whew, man, the De'Aaron Fox, that's, uh, that, ooh, that's, that's rough. I know he, I think he fractured a finger. I think some people were talking about that it's broken. I think it, the report was that it, it was just fractured, which hopefully it is just like a little fracture. Well, not a little fracture, but nothing that's, you know, too bone shattering. You know what I mean? Um, and man, you just gotta, you just gotta hope. You gotta really hope that he can really get this going because the Kings have a really, really, really good shot here, especially playing their next game at game five back in the Kings arena, I think, right? Game fives at um, Sacramento, I think it is, uh, which is really good if you're rooting for the Kings. And uh, man, hopefully the energy and the adrenaline, maybe some, also some helping from medicine, modern medicine can help numb him through this process and he can help lead this team because yeah, De'Aaron Fox has probably been the best player um, obviously on the Kings, um, I think Steph Curry is probably still the best player in the series, but man, De'Aaron is definitely right there as well, and, uh, you really gotta hope for, uh, not only obviously the other guards on the Kings to step up, like Malink, who's already been stepping up a lot, and Davion Mitchell can hopefully find himself in a bigger offensive role, but you gotta hope for DeMontis, man, so bonus has been a little bit, um, inconsistent in his play, which is kind of surprising, even though this is De'Aaron Fox's first, first, first playoff appearance. He's the one who's seeming like the veteran ready for the playoffs, and DeMont is sort of the guy who's taking not only the back seat to De'Aaron, but he's barely on the, on the bus. <laughs> not only, not just the back seat, but he's sometimes not looking too much like an all-star, so hopefully he steps up a little bit more, and, uh, I guess we can also kind of talk about like the Draymond thing with the stomp, as I like to call it, the stomp incident, incident, incident. Um, I did see it. I saw everyone else's opinions on it. It's kind of still 50-50, maybe more like 60-40 on people's opinions. Um, yes, I did see like Sabonis so grabbed his leg, but obviously Draymond's reaction wasn't the right reaction. So it's one of those things where, you know, is his reaction a viable reaction to Sabonis' reaction? And the answer is no. So yes, Draymond is, in my opinion, in the wrong. Um, it's kind of like like with your, with, when you're with your siblings and maybe your sibling pushes you or hits you, but then you hit them back and your parents like make, or you're the one that's in trouble for hitting him back. It's kind of like that scenario. You know, he has to be the, the more mature person. Obviously he's a Hall of Famer, multiple time champion, blah, blah, blah. And the fact that he's, you know, also had a bad rap with, you know, kicking people, uh, and tripping people and all that stuff. And I don't know. It's not the greatest look for him. But uh, hopefully they just move past that and play some good basketball. The other thing I've been seeing that's really disgusting are some of the reactions to some Warrior fans who have just been like, like cheering, cheering for the injury, cheering for the the downfall of the kings and blah 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 like people laughing and making jokes about like deer and like hurting getting being hurt um it's pretty crazy i hate when i i hate when i see that that's why i think sports um especially like uh communities on like twitter and stuff are just it's the worst that's why i don't really go on twitter or even have like a twitter account for my own like youtube channel i don't really like <laughs> that section anyways um no i think that's everything right Cavs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really excited, uh, in my opinion, for that. Um, I, I think the Warriors are probably going to take the series now. 
And what's really exciting is, again, not looking too much into the future, because again, I'm going to be making a recap video in a couple days, but potentially a Lakers Warriors second round. And your boy going to be really trying to go to a Lakers playoff game. If they do make it, of course, I'll knock on wood again, not trying to jinx it. But uh, if the makers, if the Lakers make it to the second round, I'm really going to try my best to get out a video to you guys and go to a Lakers game in L.A. Because um, I feel like that video will have almost the same effect, if not even a bigger effect, uh, as the last Sunday's video when I did ASMR at the football match, the soccer game. Um, that it might also have sort of the same effect, I really hope. I really, 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 really hope if I do end up going to that game that you guys go crazy with that video. Like, I need you guys to go stupidly insane with support if that does happen because not only that video is going to be good, I'm going to try to make it the best I can, but that, that th those tickets are going to be ridiculously expensive. But yeah, that's kind of it for um, a playoff talk. I'm pretty sure... Man, we're already like almost now, halfway through the video now. I think those, those, those are all the things I really wanted to talk about. But I can't talk too much about it because uh, I'm making another video about this. Let's move on to another topic, actually. And I know there are uh, still some uh, football, you know, real football, football played with your feet, or soccer to some fans out there who are still sticking around since the Sunday's game, which... Um, Again, I really wanted to thank you guys so much for um, the support on that video. It's one of the best performing videos I think I've ever had on the channel. And yeah, all I can ask is that you guys still support it. Whenever you see it pop up on your page, just give it a click. If you haven't checked it out already, if you're not really interested in sports all that often, why are you watching this video? But also check out that video. It would really mean a lot to me. But we have some soccer football games getting played. Today, as you guys are watching this video, you have a couple of Premier League teams like Forest playing Brighton, Chelsea playing Brentford, um, West Ham playing Liverpool. That should be a pretty fun game. It's actually going to be on in the afternoon. I might actually watch some of that game. I've noticed that games are actually starting a little bit later in the day. I don't know if that's just me and how I see things, but maybe if I have some free time, I might be able to watch this game because I remember... Um, Oh yeah, Man City is also playing Arsenal as well at noon, which I think I'm definitely going to watch that game for sure. I think I'll have time sometime during lunch to get that one to watch. Um, and as you guys know, I really try to watch all of the um, uh, uh, um, highlights, the games that pop up on my Twitter page or my uh, Bleacher Report, which is what I'm on right now. Um, that's usually what I I check out um, to sort of catch up on what I want to watch. Anything else really going on? Not really, not really. Uh, I know obviously there are a lot of people talking about the Champions League games. I think the next one is on Tuesday, May the 9th, which is going to be Real Madrid against Man City, which, man, that should be a pretty crazy game. And then you have uh, Milan playing I'm assuming it's Inter, I-N-T-E-R. Let me know if I pronounce that wrong as well. But, uh, yeah, I'm super excited to see some really good play. And those will be games I'm definitely watching. I think I might be on my vacation during that time. So even if the game is early, which I, right now it says it's going to be at 12 p.m. for me, I'm going to watch that game, especially Man City against... Uh, Real Madrid at a Man City Bayern Munich game, and then you also had Inter playing uh, ben Benfica, B E N F I C A, something like that. <laughs> uh, and then the day before that, on April 18th, you had uh, Real Madrid beating Chelsea two to nothing, and that's a game I watched the highlights for. Those were some pretty fun games, um, but yeah, Champions League is. Super exciting. Cannot wait to see all that sort of finished up. But really interested really interested to see actually West Ham and Liverpool and Man City versus Arsenal. Then tomorrow for you guys as well. 
a couple of other games like Tottenham playing Man United. Um, is there any other crazy games going on? Uh, Everton playing Newcastle. I guess that could be pretty fun as well. Um, that's really it. But yeah, um, also, um, when you guys might be seeing this video, or maybe even sometime this week, I'm actually going to change the title to my ASMR in public at a soccer game uh, title. I'm going to change it to football. Football, football, football game. Um, there were some people in the comments talking about, oh, it's football, it's not soccer. Um, oh, you're stupid for calling it soccer. Um, I really only wanted to, to title it soccer because A, uh, you know, I'm, I'm an American-based um, content creator. So when I say football, people on my channel are going to assume it's going to be, you know, the throwing football game. And um, I don't, well, obviously that season's not going on right now, so people might see the notification or see the title and already be super confused, and maybe that might skew their decision on clicking on the video. And also, I already have um, a, a video on my channel called ASMR in Public at a football stadium, because I went to SoFi Stadium, which is the um, Los Angeles Rams slash Chargers football team stadium. So I already have a video on my channel titled the same thing. So um, I wanted to just do the soccer thing, get it done and over with. And I think maybe another day or maybe even today I'll change it to to soccer, to football. Just so I can see if I can reach uh, maybe a different audience. Maybe you can, again, help push that video, give it some extra love. And maybe it'll, it'll reach a more international audience, which I love. I absolutely love that. You know, definitely obviously during the World Cup gained a lot of followers during then and I'm really happy those people are still sticking around and I know I still haven't really been um, following a lot of football I've said this before it's just super hard for me uh, being from overseas not being able to really watch or really even connect with the team to you know be able to follow it all that much but in these one hour long videos I always talk uh, football in them so but I think it's also time to talk some other football which I know the NFL draft, I think, is tomorrow, Thursday. And um, I guess we can talk a little bit about the mock draft for the NFL. I did already um, do one of these a while ago, but maybe we can see if any teams sort of uh, have skewed their choices. I think the last time I talked actually about this was about a month or so ago, it's been a while, but uh, the NFL Draft is tomorrow. I was thinking about doing a video on it, but I just don't know if a lot of people would really click on it. I guess you can let me know down in the comments, should I do a recap of the NFL Draft on my channel, just talk about it. Maybe there's some other trades and stuff like that, which obviously Aaron Rodgers, Aaron Rodgers is finally on the Jets, which is interesting, very interesting. I still really don't know how I feel about it. Obviously because with Aaron Rodgers, um, obviously being, at least in my opinion, I don't know how Packer fans feel now about Rodgers being the best player in that franchise's history and him wanting out and sort of making kind of a head case about his last tenure there, at least the last few years of being a Packers uh, player. Um, but... I've been seeing a lot on social media, a lot of people praising the trading of Aaron Rodgers finally, and, you know, people being, this is a, a package of toothpaste, by the way, uh, people praising the idea of Aaron Rodgers being traded, people being very happy about the trade package, which I think he got traded for. Um, the Packers and Jets did pick swaps for this current NFL draft, so I think the Packers now have picked like 13 and like... I think the Jets have picked like 16 or 17, something like that. And then the Packers also got uh, a second round pick, maybe like a third. And then I think if Aaron Rodgers plays like 60 or 70% of the games, um, they get a second round pick, another second round pick, or maybe it's a first. That's kind of confusing for Aaron Rodgers, who is a player that might only have like two years a year and a half left really in him and when you think about the Jets and that team they, 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 are they still like technically like a rebuilding team like I think they're good and I think even without Aaron Rodgers they're a playoff contention team for sure last
last year they kind of had a pretty solid season and actually have always really kind of liked the Jets only because of their jerseys. Green is my favorite color, so a lot of green teams out there. I still kind of have like a soft place in my heart for like the Boston Celtics for, ba uh, for basketball um, or another team I, I like to watch and I've liked to, ever since I started watching the sport because of their team jerseys. Kind of the same thing for the Jets and, you know, they drafted... Um, oh, what was that guy's name? He was a quarterback. I forget his name, but he was supposed to be like the future and maybe he's just not turning out. Uh, Zach Wilson, that's his name. And maybe he's not supposed to be, maybe he's not that guy for them. And, you know, I'm assuming they're either A, with this trade, hoping to accelerate, 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 accelerate the process of the Jets rebuild, trying to get out of a couple years into the future with getting a guy like Aaron Rodgers. Or B, just trying to maybe get a nice quarterback to really help Zach Wilson get some, you know, experience under his belt, and then maybe the season after, or maybe the, when, whenever Aaron Rodgers decides to retire, you have this super, super, super elevated quarterback in Zach Wilson who maybe has learned a thing or two, or hopefully a lot of things, from uh, one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history, and uh, that could also very much accelerate the timeline of your team. Or there's the doomsday option, which, um, you sacrificed your future for a quarterback that will barely play for this team and will retire in a year or two and you might only make the playoffs and that's it maybe Zach Wilson's development actually gets hurt by not playing and not performing and he actually turns out to be a big bust and you wasted some draft picks and selections and assets for a uh, playoff appearance. That's also the risk, but I do think they have a good squad right now with Aaron Rodgers. I think that the potential, the potential to go far. Can they win the Super Bowl? God, the Kansas City Chiefs are so good. Um, I'm not entirely sure. But I think they have a good shot at making it pretty far in the playoffs if this team sort of is, you know, built the right way and goes the right way. And I think they have a shot. Anyways, that was kind of a long ramble. I don't really care how I feel about it. Uh, Aaron Rodgers is so old, I don't really know how much he can go on for. But talking about the NFL draft, um, with the first pick, the Carolina Panthers are still projected to take Bryce Young from Alabama, quarterback. Um, really, 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 really high on this, on this guy. Um, it's really interesting because I remember just months and months and months ago, I remember checking the mock draft and... You know, a lot of these quarterbacks weren't really even up there in sort of even like the top three picks, but it seems like they've definitely upped their draft stock and uh, probably through a lot of like watching and maybe even like the draft combat. I'm not sure they have that for, I'm sure the, the top picks go, I don't, in the NBA, the top picks don't go the, to the draft combine, so I don't know if for the NFL it's the same, but maybe they saw them. And the, the Carolina Panthers, who obviously traded a pick, you know, they traded multiple things to move up in the draft, I think, to get this guy. So they obviously think uh, Bryce Young is their man for Carolina. The Houston Texans have taken a quarterback in Anthony Richardson from Florida. Haven't really seen a lot of him. Um, let's see, it says that he needs to clean up his mechanics to improve his accuracy. It's go big or go home with this pick. He said Richardson provides elite traits and duels at quarterback. So, apparently he's, you know, he has the potential, but will he hit it? I don't know, with a team like Houston, it's probably also a hit and miss for them as well, as a team. Hopefully they, they get it going for sure. Oh, also talking about Houston. Um, the Houston Rockets recently got, um, uh, Udoka, I think that's his last name, right? Um, to be their new head coach, which I'm, I've seen, like, the memes. I, I get it, yes, very funny, but, um, uh, I really hope he can uh, set more of a tone and um, a, a, not a responsibility, but just hell hold his players more accountable than uh, Paul Silas did. I think that's his first name, right? Paul Silas. Silas, their old head coach, uh, didn't really seem to have any grasp on his team or players. Um, that team was 
guys because I think Houston can really be a good basketball team, especially if they do get like uh, obviously like Victor, they get Wemby or you know any one of the, the Scoot Anderson would be great for them as well. Um, yeah. Anyways, talking NFL. Um, Tennessee Titans taking C.J. Stroud from Ohio State. Indianapolis Colts taking Will uh, Levi from T- Kentucky. I think I pronounced that right. Levi Levis. I think it's Levi, right? Um, Seattle Seahawks taking uh, defensive lineman Jalen Carter, who for a while I saw was like the number one pick for a while, for like months, going into uh, the NFL season. And then again, the quarterback started to shoot up in the rankings. And I just hear that Carter is arguably the best defensive, sorry, defensive tackle prospect of the past decade. Wow. Um, that would be insane. That'd be really good, obviously. Um, Seattle, known for defense, the Legion of Boom, blah, blah, blah. And a team that, um, crazy that they were in the playoffs last year and had some good success, can get a top five pick is insane and arguably get maybe the best player in the draft, we'll have to see, obviously, what, what happens with these quarterbacks, and I obviously know the quarterback position is the most important position, maybe in all sports, but, uh, man, getting a good defensive lineman who can just shred defense like it's something like an, a, a new age Aaron Donald could be really good, really, really good for a team of, like, Seattle. Detroit Lions taking uh, Will Anderson Jr., who was also a player I saw really high up on the draft lottery, uh, mock drafts, I should say. You have the Raiders taking uh, Devon Witherspoon from Illinois. Center back. I saw some other uh, mock drafts that had uh, Vegas taking another quarterback because I think... um, Oh, what's his name? What's his name? Left the 49ers, and I think he signed with the Raiders, didn't he? Uh, Derek Carr, that's his name. Uh, and, and Jimmy Garoppolo, that's the other guy's name. Okay, they're starting to pop back in my head um, with... Um, Derek Carr leaving, and I'm not actually sure where he even signed. Was it Minnesota? Something like that. And Jimmy G now back in the Raider Nation, or I guess in Raider Nation, not back, but in Raider Nation. I had some mocks seeing him, to seeing them take a quarterback. Like, uh, um, I'm not sure though. Atlanta taking uh, uh, Tyree Wilson, who is a another edge player. Chicago Bears taking Lucas Van Ness. Philly taking Christian Gonzalez, which is also crazy that a team that was just, 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 just in the Super Bowl having a top 10 pick, which is actually kind of crazy, but, but yeah, it's, I'm, I am going to watch the, the NFL draft, maybe like the first like 10, 15 picks, and then go on with my day. Obviously, the NFL draft is super long, don't really have too much, too much, too much interest in it either, but maybe, again, comment down below if you guys would watch a video of me sort of breaking it down and just what players went where, and maybe there are any big trades, maybe I can do sort of like a recap on that, you should definitely let me know, let me, let me, let me know. Also, another thing we can talk about before this video is over, are the MLB, or the MLB, is the MLB, <laughs> we have uh, baseball, baseball, baseball still going on, which, yes, uh, I know, I am not a watcher of baseball, really at all, unless I go to a game. I love going to baseball games so much. I think it's my favorite sporting event to go see live. Even though I think football, soccer, <laughs> may have stolen that because that was just super insane atmosphere. But I love the vibe of baseball games so much. And, um, yeah, that's still going on. Let's actually check the standings, which I do. I do do. I do. I do do that. Um, every time I do one of these one hour or whispering about sports till you fall asleep videos. Let's check the standings. So for the AL East, we have the Rays still looking really good <laughs> at 20 and 4, um, 7 and 3 in their last 10. And then guess who right now, at least the recording of this video, is in second place? <sighs> it's a fact. The Baltimore Orioles. Isn't that crazy? Yes, the Orioles have a better record than the Boston Red Sox, of course, because the Red Sox suck now, apparently. But also, they have a better record than the New York Yankees, which, wow. Um, never thought I would see that. The season has just started, though. There's still, like, 300 more games of regular season baseball left, so we'll see what happens. Then you have the Jays, the Yankees at four, and the Red
Red Sox at 5. In the AL Central, you have the Minnesota Twins at 14 and 10, who had a very hot start to the season, kind of sizzle, 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 sizzling out, going 4 6, throwing a three game winning streak right now, though. But man, they definitely have taken a little bit of a step back with the Guardians almost catching up to them in second, with the Tigers third, so white, 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 white Sox fourth, and Royals fifth. Um, uh, I can I sort of tease the idea. Uh, which at the start of the video I talked about, like, going to see other supporting events. One of the ones is actually, um, going to a Kansas City Royals baseball game. I don't know if any of you, uh, have been to a Kansas City Royals game. Is, is the stadium good? Is it nice? Is it worth going to? Uh, I could maybe also go to a Cardinals game, a St. Louis Cardinals game. I don't know if that stadium's any better. Let me know if you've been to either one. I would, I would love to know your, your opinions on that, because... I, I want to do more videos like that, so it's on the table. Uh, in the AL West, we have the Rangers in first with the Astros in second. And obviously, the Astros are the defending champs, are they not? I think if I can remember it, they are. You have my, 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 not even really my, but my favorite team. I almost said my Angels, but they're just my favorite team in the LA A Angels, Los Angeles Angels of Anaheim in third, which is okay. Um, they're still very much an up and down team. They still have probably the, the worst bullpen in the MLB, but still have maybe the best pitcher. It's Shohei Otani, baby, but yeah, the team is just, it's so lacking depth in pitching, and they're just so up and down with hitting as well. They're just, they can be one of the best teams in baseball, but they can also play like the absolute dog duty is to team as well. Now oh, they have Mariners fourth, who have definitely, definitely taken a step back from last season, having a good spark, and then, at least, again, what, what I've heard from uh, the talk of the town, since they are technically my local team, uh, not really doing a lot to really upgrade the team from last season, and people might even argue that they even downgraded going into this season, which obviously last season they broke the longest Major League Baseball um, streak of not making the playoffs. It was actually one of the longest streaks in sports in America, not making the playoffs, and decided to not really go for it after that is pretty insane to me. And then we have uh, the Oakland A's, who are soon to be the Las Vegas, you name it. Um, I wonder what they're going to name the new team. I don't think it's going to be the Las Vegas Athletics or the Las Vegas A's. Um, I guess they could, but knowing Vegas, they want to make it some sort of, like, Vegas thing. Like, obviously, they have the, the Las Vegas Aces. Um, I guess the Golden Knights aren't really a Vegas name, but, like, gold being involved with it makes sense. But, um, I wonder what's, like, a cool sort of name for a Vegas team, for a baseball team. I'm not sure. You can comment it down below. But, uh, they're going to Vegas. And, guys, I'm not going to lie. I might have to go to a Las Vegas baseball, <laughs> Major League Baseball game whenever their new stadium opens up. Y'all know I'm definitely on, on my Vegas sort of um, enjoyment right now. Definitely would not mind going back and going to more sporting events while I'm down there one of these days. In the NL East, we have the Braves, the, the, the Mets, the Marlins, the Phillies, and the Nationals in dead last. Um, the Braves are looking pretty good. In the NL Central, you have the Pirates, the Brewers, the Cubs, the Reds, and the Cardinals dead last there. So, again, Royals dead last, Cardinals dead last. Not really the most popular teams, but I really still want to do more, again, IRL content for you guys. So, going to a baseball game at one of their stadiums, just let me know which one you guys would want to see. Uh, in the NL West, you have the Dodgers at 13 and 11. Barely right behind them in the second spot are the Diamondbacks, the Arizona Diamondbacks, um, which my family are actually pretty, pretty big fans of. I have a lot of family who live in Arizona. Pretty much my entire family, like line, almost comes straight out of Arizona. So, um, Tucson area and blah, blah, blah. So, uh, my dad even has uh, a DVD of the Arizona 
ASMR. 
sucks. And yeah, anyways, I love sports though. I do love sports. I'm not saying I'm done talking sports, but it's just to the point where, you know, uh, there's more to me than sports. There's more to you than sports. And I'd love to know what you like and other stuff that you like and your other interests. That's just like how I would hope that you would be interested in that about me. But anyways, that was sort of a deep, 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 deep conversation. Um, and this video is almost at an hour. So I just really, 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 really again wanted to thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for watching this video. Maybe I'll do this outro in soft spoken, soft spoken, soft spoken, soft spoken. I just really want to thank you guys so much for watching tonight's video. I kind of have to like warm my voice up to doing more soft spoken. Um, but I really hope that, um, you know, you continue supporting the channel. Make sure you like this video. If you did like this video, it obviously helps out a lot with the YouTube's algorithm, which obviously you can see that I'm not just uh, talking crap out of my mouth when I say that. You can check out Sunday's video, and you can see what happens when you do like a video. It obviously pushes the, ch uh, the video to so many different people, so obviously there's literal proof on my channel that liking the video is super important. Also, make sure you comment down below um, sort of any topics that are going around in sports right now that you sort of want to put out there. Um, and I can obviously, you know, I'm, I'm always in the comments in my videos. I can talk about it down there. Um, again, kind of sorry I couldn't really go like too much in, de in depth about the NBA playoffs, like talking about the rounds and the series and, you know, going into the future and maybe picking a new NBA champion, a new favorite. We'll have to see. But, uh, which is kind of funny because I actually picked uh, at the start of the year that the Clippers were going to be the champs this year, which um, obviously didn't happen. So, um, I have a video coming out, I think, either on Saturday. I think Saturday because I think that's when most of this series are going to end. I'm going to come out with the, with the video then because I can't do it on Sunday because Sunday is a, a new day on the channel. It's a uh, I guess ASMR and public day and then Monday I do Monday night live streams and then Tuesday I might already be too late to sort of put out a video like that so I might be a day early when I do that video but we'll have to see but yeah uh, thank you guys again, 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 thank, you, thank, you, thank, you, thank you thank you so much I love you I love you love you love you love you love you and I really really hope to see you again in another video very 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 soon